Welcome back to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're honored to be with our next guest. He is the CEO of Absolute Storage Management, Scott Beatty. And Scott, how are you doing? Doing well. Thanks. It's an honor to be here. Appreciate it. So we get to dive into the world of storage, and uh, I definitely want to have you share a lot of tips, and you yourself are very philanthropic, your company very philanthropic, so we're going to talk about that as well, community engagement, but give us a little bit of a, of a history lesson. Formed in 2002, go ahead and give us some history for Absolute Storage Management. Uh, happy to, yeah, thank you again. Uh, we, yes, we, we formed our business in 2002. Uh, myself and two business partners worked together at Storage USA, uh, which Dean Jernigan uh, began. And uh, we started there in the mid 90s. And uh, as Dean was going through a couple different transactions uh, with, and eventually uh, forming or consolidating with extra space, my two partners and I looked at each other and said, you know, I think we can do a little bit of this on our own. Uh, so that was 2002. We had one owner, one client that uh, gave us a shot to manage their self-storage property. Uh, it turned out to be in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, and we took it and we ran with it. That property got an incredible amount of love and attention because there were three of us and only one property to manage. Uh, and we've grown it ever since. So uh, we now stand at roughly 135 properties uh, across the South and Southeast, uh, 15 states all of which are contiguous to one another, which we think is, is part of our, our secret to success in terms of uh, you know, being responsible geographically so that we can serve our clients well. Uh, and so we've got uh, just around 15 locations here in the greater Memphis market. Nashville is a large market for us, Atlanta, Charlotte, uh, and then also properties down in Louisiana and Mississippi and, and all, all over uh, the South and Southeast. So very, very excited. We are roughly 275 team members strong. Uh, our corporate offices are here in Cordova uh, with 17 team members. Uh, our Cordova office comprises of mainly accounting and marketing efforts. And then the bulk of our team members are in the field. Uh, so the 250 plus are, are scattered throughout the 15 states and, and, and select regional offices. And so uh, from a pandemic perspective, we were, we were very naturally uh, comfortable being remote. And uh, so that's, you know, that's uh, been, been a highlight, if you will, of, of if, if you can call it that, of, of this pandemic. But uh, we continue to go go strong and uh, and grow. Usually, grow about ten to fifteen properties a year. Wow, dive in a little bit deeper onto the operational side because you mentioned management, and so talk about kind of how you do what you do. Yeah, we manage the day to day business. So most of our clients are in real estate in one form or fashion. Uh, they most of them are either in office or retail or multifamily, single family. They get turned on to self storage. They see it as a nice investment opportunity, but they aren't prepared to manage the day to day components to it. So that's where we come in. So we'll take over management of their property. We we'll do everything uh, on on site from staffing the facility. The the team members that are at the locations are ours. Uh, we do all the back office accounting work, all the the rental, all the marketing uh, website work is all done by us in house. Call centers and other support functions as well. Um, so our clients, you know, get naturally get uh, financials from us on a monthly basis. They get other correspondences from us. And if, if things are going well, which knock on wood they have been, uh, they'll get distribution checks and they go on their merry way and we continue to, to operate. So um, it's worked out beautifully. We've, over the years, we've been able to acquire properties of our own. So of the 135, we have ownership in roughly 25 locations. And, and hope to continue to grow that because uh, that is a wonderful part of the business. But primarily we remain a third party management company. Um, the industry is, is large. There, there are roughly 50,000 self-storage properties throughout the country. Um, and about 25% of them are owned or managed by the large public REITs. So the large public real estate investment trusts such as public storage and extra space and U-Haul, 
Um, so, so that still leaves roughly 75% of the market uh, that is either self-managing or using firms like us. So we are, at the moment, we're the ninth largest uh, self-storage operator in the country. Uh, the, the public companies occupy the first six, seven uh, spots in that list, and then we are the second or third largest private operator. Wow, that's awesome. And I love the fact based right here in the Memphis area, which is uh, yeah. an awesome storyline. How has the industry changed or how is it changing as you look forward? So what's been one of the big trends or changes over the years or, or where we're headed within this industry? Uh, great question. Yeah, thankfully, the product itself is still in very high demand. Uh, we still, as as Americans, like to collect things and like to like to acquire things and and need space, uh, need extra space to 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 store them. And so, uh, that that continues strong and has continued strong through COVID. I, as a lot of industries, I would say now the pandemic has really fast forwarded technology for us. So we were very fortunate. We had already put in place contact free renting. So fully, fully online renting ca capacity prior to COVID. But once it started, once COVID really kicked in in last March, the number of online rentals for us it just grew uh, astronomically. So we, prior to COVID, we would do five to 10% of our rentals online. During COVID, we, we did 40% of our rentals online. And so it was, a, it was an extreme fast forward uh, for us. And a lot, of, a lot of that is, or a lot of what held us back prior to that was, was just the, the customer and the customer being in their habits and feeling like, I needed to go to the facility to secure my unit. I needed to be educated on the product. As you know, when all this began to happen, the, some of those barriers kind of broke away and folks said, I've, I've got to figure out how to acquire this service in another form or fashion. So the online rental really took off uh, and we're seeing that continue thankfully. And, and I think that's gonna to continue to be a trend. Um, so we'll be able to serve our customers in, in, in a different way uh, that won't be as physical, but it'll mean that we can re-implement our on-site team members because we're we're not really looking to reduce staff. Uh, we in, we take a great deal of pride in in employing a lot of folks, and so we'll be able to implement to use them in different ways to service the customer more than just the average rental. Uh, it'll be more of a service to the to the customer instead of just an administrative focus. Yeah. What on your end, um, when you look at some of the, the tips and things, because you put a lot of resources out, especially online, give us maybe one or two tips for the, the customer side in terms of using self-storage and just being more efficient and maybe packing things in and Tetris style. Like, what, what are some of your favorite yeah. tips to put out there? And I, I, you'd be surprised how much you can put into a space, I think is kind of one of the, one of the takeaways. Uh, yeah, we'll often see somebody rent a space, I would say 30 or 40% bigger than they really need. And it's because they don't recognize that they can truly stack things. Um, so, you know, take advantage of that space. You, you know, a 10 by 15 with a 10 foot ceiling is actually quite a bit of space. Uh, you just have to be willing to, to use it appropriately. Uh, what we always recommend is try not to put boxes directly on, on the concrete because there are moisture issues from time to time. So be, be conscious of how you're, you're placing things in there. Give, give serious thought to whether you need climate control or not. It is a great product. Uh, and if you're, you're planning to, to stay for 12, 18, 24 months through a couple of cycles of seasons, you know, in the Memphis heat with the humidity, climate control could be a good option for you. Um, and, and look for the providers that, that truly do uh, provide that customer service. You know, when there, there's only a few things that we're looking for as consumers for storage. And one of them is, is safety. And so look for the providers that, 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 that give you that sense of security, that have the the cameras and the other features of the property. Um, you know, when we put our things in storage, our expectation is that they're gonna be the same in the same condition when we come back for them months and, and years later. Uh, so be aware of the quality of the facility that you're, you're storing with. Yeah, absolutely, great, great tips. 
Let's talk about philanthropy, community engagement. You yourself heavily involved in the University of Memphis Mile program. And um, we have a, an opportunity on our end to uh, partner with them every year and have a long standing relationship with them and do so much good here in the community in terms of pairing business students together with mentors and they go through as mentor protege pairs and learn a tremendous amount and grow and develop. But talk about community engagement on your end because that's just one of many organizations you support. So talk about philanthropy overall and then we'll dive in a little bit deeper. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. It, it's just something that's near and dear to my heart as it is you know, a lot of Memphians. Uh, it's, as a transplant to this city, I, I moved here back in 2002. Uh, I, I was just amazed at the generosity and the love that exists in this community. It, it, you know, we don't give ourselves enough credit for that and the outside world doesn't, doesn't see that often. And so, uh, it just it's just very natural uh, for me. And so therefore, you know, it's it's a message. It's a culture that I've tried to build here in the company. So, yeah, the mile program is near and dear to our heart. We've my, I personally have been participating for eight years. We've ultimately been a member for 10 years. Uh, we've got a number of team members, including our vice president of marketing, whom we found through the mile program, uh, who was a student uh, and we brought on as an intern. She excelled, uh, just an amazing, amazing young woman and has, has grown up through the ranks and, and uh, just does a fabulous job for us. And there are a few other examples like that in our organization as well that, uh, that we've gotten uh, the privilege of being introduced to through the mile program. Um, I think it's just, I, I, I'm attracted to it because it's such a unique, I think a unique uh, avenue for students and, per, and professionals and leaders to really connect on a very genuine, in a very genuine way and in established relationships. And I only wish I had that 30 years ago uh, when I was going through college and uh, you know, those, those networking opportunities and um, yeah, it's just a neat, neat way for 80 to 100 students to connect with 80 to 100, uh, you know, leaders and influencers in the greater Memphis market. And, um, and we need to be growing our talent and retaining our talent in this, in this city. And this is, I think, a great way to promote that. Talk about your involvement with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Shelby Farms Park, some of the other organizations yeah. you all support. I appreciate that too. Yeah, we've we've done a lot over the years, uh, particularly with St. Jude. Uh, again, near and dear to my heart, we are touched uh, as a family, uh, mostly indirectly via St. Jude, but uh, also through different friends and things directly. And so we've gotten we've just dived into that organization. Uh, my wife and I have have played a role as ambassadors for them over the years. Uh, we as a company have done some significant fundraising. So for the 2019 marathon weekend, we raised as a company over $50,000 for St. Jude. Um, and we, we, did, we did a lesser amount in 2018 and, and got an up and comer award from them. So that was, that was really neat. Uh, 2020 was a little bit off just due to the, the whole pandemic. Um, but we, we've, we, just, we just enjoy that relationship. We enjoy everything that it embodies uh, and, and their spirit. And we, for us, that organization works so well. You know, clearly being headquartered here in, in Memphis is, is huge connection. But the fact that it is a international uh, company, a hospital organization, um, and us being in 15 states, you know, really gives us something as a company to latch on to as well, that, that all of our team members can be a part of, uh, the ones outside of Memphis can really connect with in a neat way. Uh, Shelby Farms has been wonderful as well. Uh, we've done a number of things with them over the years, including significant donations. Uh, we've helped plant a couple hundred trees uh, you have a couple benches around around the park, uh, the dog park. We played a, a role uh, in that at the beginning as well. And one of the things I'm most proud of is is just memberships for each of our Memphis located team members uh, to the park. And so it's it's a great way to to encourage our team to to take advantage of what an incredible resource it is, but to also then support Shelby Farms. Um, 
and then throughout the years, we've just done a lot of other activities. Uh, one of one of which that comes to mind is the new Memphis Institute supported uh, both their Embark and Fellows programs. Had team members of ours supported team members of ours to go through those programs. Um, we've done educational scholarships through our self storage association, which is a national self storage association. Uh, we do internships regularly through the University of Memphis, and that's outside of the MILE program, but also with, with the university itself. Um, and then lastly, the, the one big project that we do every year as a company is Toys for Tots. Uh, so over the years, we've collected thousands of toys uh, for that organization, which is, which is just fantastic. We place collection boxes in each of our 135 locations, uh, and it, it really pays off uh, enormously, and it's, it's really gratifying to be able to do that. And I think it's just really important for people to hear the heart of the business. And like you said, so much of this stuff doesn't get the limelight it deserves, including your philanthropic efforts, just like we're talking about. So go ahead and wrap up with website, contact information. Where do we go to learn more about Absolute Storage Management? Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, Absolute Storage Management. So it's at absolutemgmt.com. You can just Google search us or absolutemgmt.com. Look for us, look for our locations in the Memphis area and all of our contact information is out there. Well, Scott, greatly appreciate all you and your team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you.